All right, so now we're going to continue on in this session of um, doing a UR cap toolpath uh, and importing a sketch from SOLIDWORKS. So we've talked about TCPs, planes, variable waypoints, how to move the robot relative to the different planes and tool and base and how to um, do a scalable program when you have simple shapes. But now let's say we have this more complicated shape. Um, so now I want to walk you through the process of using uh, SOLIDWORKS to import a sketch and really how quick and simple it is to generate uh, this path. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch SOLIDWORKS. And I'm just going to, I did some things here, but I'll walk you through it. The idea is that first we're going to draw two lines that will represent our uh, plane. Uh, and so what the, the reason you want to do that is because you're probably going to have your parts on some sort of jig. And the idea is that you want to then, you know, like let's say now we have this part. The offset of this part relative to our jig is something that, that we want to keep constant because we are going to use this as our coordinate system. And so we want our part relative to our coordinate system to be... Uh, you know, some fixed amount compared to our jig. So, you know, I made this uh, pattern up arbitrarily, but it has radiuses and circles, which would be hard to program because they're not straight lines. So it would take a lot of points to define this, uh, this path. So then I went in and I defined the coordinate system in SOLIDWORKS, which is at this point. And, um, and if you, if you want to see like, right, like, you want to do it with the z-axis pointing up, right? Uh, so, so we want to have the z-axis pointing up, the x to the right, y, y going like that for the right-hand rule. So now the next thing I did is I said, okay, you know what? I, I want to show how to do two of them, right? But um, so I, I included a second one. And then I want to show how to stay within, like, let's say a groove. Right, so you might want to stay within a groove if you're doing uh, some sort of, uh, you know, dispensing inside of a of a of a path like a gasket, right? So we have that. Um, so then I went in and I, you know, I I extruded, I I offsetted the entities and I cut them. All right, and then this next section is where we will have, uh, right? So I defined the sketch. And this sketch is just, I did it, I did that by offsetting entities from here so that it's in the center, right? So, you know, if you know SOLIDWORKS, you'll know how to do that. Uh, so that's, you know, that's not really the, the whole intent of, of this seminar. So, okay, so we have, we have a sketch and now uh, we're gonna go in here and I'll just delete this and start over. So if you've installed the plugin, right, for, for SOLIDWORKS, uh, for the UR cap from the toolpath UR cap from UR, you will have this and you will have this, uh, you know, this little UR tool, toolpath tree and this UR toolpath generator. So it's extremely simple. They've done a great job here of uh, importing, being able to import this, uh, this into into the into polyscope. So we'll have here, you know, we'll call this gasket. And so here it says, okay, you know, what is your coordinate system? So we're gonna have it be coordinate system one. So you know, what is your clearance height, your retract height? Let's set these to be both 30 millimeters. The tool speed of 50, you know, you can set it here, but it doesn't matter because you can override it. And we'll have a tool height of one millimeter. That is, you know, how high off of this coordinate system do you want your tool path to be? So that's it, you know, three settings, uh, clearance height, retract height, and uh, the speed, which doesn't matter because you can override it later, and then the tool height. Okay, so perfect. So now we have this tool path, but now we need to add a, you know, a 2D segment. So we're going to go in here and say add 2D segment, and we'll call this, um, you know, gasket, we can call it uh, gasket path. Uh, and so what is your sketch, right? Our sketch for this gasket path is going to be this last sketch that I, 
you know, this last sketch that I put together. Uh, and then the starting point, right, will be, so if I go here now to the starting point, it will be that. And I can, you know, I, I typically will want to go along a long path. I will talk about like, you know, overlapping and, and different things there. So I want to flip the travel direction. This little arrow tells you in which direction you're going to do that. So, so great. So now I have, you know, my, my gasket path set up. I have my direction, my sketch. So perfect. So I have these two things. So now I go in here and I'm going to say export toolpath one uh, NC file for each segment. And, you know, I can, I can select the folder here. I'm going to have it in this desktop original toolpath, say select folder. And great, the toolpath is already there. So another convenience thing that I do uh, is I will have here, uh, you know, uh, FileZilla and I will have it uh, be, you know, set up to my, uh, to connect to my robot. I'm in the programs directory of the robot and I can just come in here and say upload. All right. So now this gasket path is here and it's in my, it's in Polyscope. So I don't have to leave, you know, go grab a USB stick or anything like that. Um, all right, so now I'm at an empty program, completely empty program. So how do you actually, you know, use this now? So it's actually super simple. You will come here in the program and you will say, I want to do a toolpath move. And the toolpath move says what TCP. So this assumes that you have a properly defined TCP, which, you know, we covered everything about that. We're not going to spin the tool freely around its z-axis so that it stays normal. We, we're going to keep in, in this direction, so we're not going to have that. And, you know, we're going to go 100 millimeters per, per second is fine. And so here, where is our tool path? Well, our tool path is going to be our gasket path that we just selected. And now I printed this out, you know, and I have it here on the right. And what you see there is, you know, we want this to be our, uh, our actual uh, coordinate system. So I went ahead before and, you know, I'll show you now. I went into the installation and I created a, a plane called pad plane. So if I say move here, right, it's right there. And it is, uh, you know, we covered everything about how to define a plane. It, you know, the x-axis is as the orange is shown here. The blue is the, is the y and the purple, you know, will be the c-axis. So now, now that you have that defined, when you go here in the program, you can say pad plane. Well, so actually let's, yeah, so pad plane will be, you know, these are the different planes that you can have. So... I'm going to say, you know, the robot. Okay, so we're not moving. All right, so right here, we should be already ready to go in and run this. So we'll run it. Okay, so that is obviously way too fast. And the reason that it's way too fast, so we can say here, uh, let's do, so here we can say you share tool speed. All right, so let's say here that we'll, you know, we'll use 20 millimeters per second. So let's try that again. All right, perfect. So, I mean, if you, that is staying perfectly within um, the, you know, inside of that, inside of that gasket, right? Okay, but we have two there, right? And so this is a little trick on, on how to, you know, how do you actually do two different ones? Uh, so if we wanted to, to offset this, well, from, from SOLIDWORKS, I know that, you know, this has an offset of 60 millimeters in the Y direction. Okay. So what we have to do is we will create an assignment, right? We will say advanced assignment, uh, and we will say that, you know, this variable we'll call you know, ref plane for reference plane. And what is this reference plane going to be? It's going to be, uh, you know, our, our uh, transpose of our currently defined plane, which if you go here to variables, what was our, our uh, pad plane? And how much do we want to offset it by? 
Well, we want to offset it by 60 millimeters in the Y. So that's one, two, three, and one more, and close the brackets. Perfect. So now we have a reference plane that is um, that is essentially um, shifted over 60 millimeters in the Y. So now we can come in here and we can say, you know what? We don't have a fixed reference plane. We have a variable reference plane. Um, and that variable will be ref plane. And so now that we have this variable called ref plane, if we run this now, you'll see that we're going to go and perfectly now do the, uh, the second one. So that is, you know, if you now have like a, like a jig of, of parts, that is how simple. I mean, I don't know, did that take maybe 10 minutes? I mean, I, I had some things set up like my plane, but really nothing else. And within 10 minutes, you can define a, a complicated path like that. Um, another thing that, another sort of trick that I have that, uh, you know, when we generated the toolpath, it fixes the height to be, you know, some height, like one millimeter above the part. And, you know, you might find that, that you wanted to do it higher or lower, and it's a little bit cumbersome to keep going back and forth doing that. So one thing that you can do is just like we offset it that plane 60 millimeters, we can actually offset uh, our, you know, if I want to do it a little lower, I can say, I want to actually offset this part a thousand, you know, half a millimeter in the C. And if we do this, you'll see that, you know, we'll actually get even closer to the paper. Uh, and, and really, you know, we can, so, so we can, you know, programmatically adjust that height as we do our toolpath. So, um, so you might be wondering now, you know, well, how do you actually trigger anything? Because, you know, you really didn't, we, we didn't turn anything on. So if we had a dispenser or some sort of welder or something like that, how do we actually turn it on and off? And, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, but the way, you know, to me, the simplest way to do that right now is that you would create here under the robot program, I would create an event and I would, you know, go here to my program and say, add before start sequence. And I would say, I would assign some variable like trigger. And I would say that trigger is false. And now that trigger is false, I'm going to say here when trigger is true, right? So when trigger is true, so this is saying, um, actually, sorry, when variable uh, trigger equals true, right? When variable trigger equals two, true, you do something. And here you might, you know, set some IO. Uh, so for example, I can say set and I can say uh, set digital output zero high. Right. And then with time, and this is something that you'll have to figure out, you know, how long that path takes, but you can do a wait. Uh, and then you can also copy the trigger to false. So we'll copy the trigger to false and then we'll do a wait of like, let's say five seconds and, uh, and we'll set trigger to false. And so right before you start your toolpath move, Right. Um, so in here, you can say um, advanced. Uh, well, actually, you can just copy this and go in here and say paste and say trigger equals to true. And now, uh, so trigger equals to true. We're going to, you know, basically this event will fire and then it will reset after five seconds. So now, if we go into our IO, so remember we were looking at this. So as soon as we start, you know, that trigger will go on and it will go on for five seconds. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> it won't go on for five seconds because we never reset it. So, you know, it will do its thing. So basically we want to come in here, you know, we'll turn that off and we'll just repeat that and we'll just say copy and paste and set this low. And so now if we, you know, go back again to the IO and run this one more time, you'll see, you know, we go high and then we wait five seconds and then that trigger goes off. And so you would have to time, you know, your, your path and define at what point you want to turn it off. But that would be one simple way to turn something on and off as you're using this toolpath uh, 